Okay, we're now joined by the University of Alabama defense, defensive coordinator Kirby Smart, linebacker Denzel Duvall, and defensive back Eddie Jackson. Welcome, guys, and coach, your thoughts about the game. Well, first, I'd like to thank the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Committee for having us. Um, it's my first Cotton Bowl. Been to a lot of good bowls since I've got into uh, coaching, but my first chance to come to this bowl. We've really been impressed so far as a team and uh, a university with the standard they've created and the, the host people, especially at our hotel, they've been really gracious to us through some tough weather conditions, but um, kind of different than what we've seen before in maybe New Orleans or, or Miami, but it's been a good event so far. Um, and I'm excited about the progress this defense has made this year. Um, this is a great group of young men. Absolutely everything we've asked them to do from the first day of spring practice last year, when we challenged them about the way the season ended last year, they've responded to that. And uh, they've answered every challenge we've given them. And I'm really proud of them. It's a special group that uh, I've been involved with a lot of seniors on this defense and uh, a lot of guys that I help recruit that are special to me. And, They've all kind of answered the bell and done what we've asked them to do. So I'm excited about that. Okay, thank you. Gentlemen, you guys need to maybe pull your microphones a little closer to you when you get ready to speak so that they can hear you a little bit. And we'll take our first question for coach or student athletes. Put your hand up. Got a question right up here on the front. Left-hand side, hold on. Ladies. Coach, Tony Cornish, Jr., WTVY, Dothan. You talk about this being a special group. Is that really the parameter that you based your decision to stay and run this gamut out with this team you've sweated with and, and really you know, formed a kinship with over these years? Well, no, not really. The defensive line cornered me in a room and said that if I didn't stay, that uh, there'd, be, there'd be an altercation. So I was fort no, I'm just kidding. They, uh, these, this group of kids is special to me because a lot of them I help recruit. Um, you know, fortunately, the University of Georgia, President Moorhead and, and Greg McGarity uh, allowed me to coach in this game, which I thought was awesome. And uh, University of Alabama allowed me to coach in the game because without both those parties being willing to do this, I wouldn't be able to do it. But at the end of the day, it's about these guys. And it wouldn't be fair to them to coach them all season and go through what we've been through as a, as a unit and then not coach in this game. It was the right thing to do, still the right thing to do. So I'm honored that they wanted me to do it and that I was allowed to do it. Got a question on the outside left, and then we'll come to the front. Right, or right over there, right. there you go. Mike Rada, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. Kirby, along those same lines, I don't think there's another occupation in the world that would allow you to do what you're able to do. Why is college football different that you can serve kind of two masters, if you will? I would say it's different because of the timing of things. Obviously, when, when people are having job searches and that kind of stuff, the timing falls at different times. There's a big gap from our last game to this game, and a lot goes on in our profession. So you have to be professional about it. You know, you, you, don't, you don't have to be enemies with everybody in this profession, and I think that's kind of indicated by how we've been able to handle this and be able to move forward with it. But at the end of the day, guys, it's, it's not about me. It's about this game, and it's about these players who've earned the right to be here. I know a lot of the media attention wants to go to that, but that's not what I'm focusing on. I can promise you that. My focus is on getting these guys ready to play and having them ready to play a great game against Michigan State. Got a question here on the front. Hondo Carpenter from Spartan Nation. For both Denzel and Eddie, I'd like you both to address this, if you would, please. Michigan State's Connor Cook is a different quarterback than some of the guys that you face. Clearly, you face some good ones, but he is a game changer with his ability to go down the field. Could you give me your thoughts after watching him specifically on film? Well, I feel, uh, you know, Connor Cook, you know, Michigan State, they have, they have a great team, especially their offense. They have a lot of good receivers. Uh, but he's, uh, he's a, he, got, he has a strong arm. You know, he's accurate. We've seen the throws he makes on um, film. I mean, he's just an accurate guy. He's a big guy. He's long. Like I say, he, he's, he's a very deep threat. He's a real deep threat. So we just got to go out there and play our defense and make sure we go over our keys to the, to the perk. Uh, personally, I feel like he's uh, one of the best quarterbacks we've played all season. Uh, it just comes down to reading our keys, getting a call, and executing a call. So, uh, I mean, that's what we've been doing all week, and um, hopefully carry over in the game. We got a question on the platform all the way at the back. Tom and Eno, WVTM TV in Birmingham. Kirby, I, I know you, you said your focus is on this game and winning this game, but how difficult has it been for you to balance 
your new job and, and the job you're in this week? Uh, it's, it's really been a timing issue because, I mean, there's a week where I was on the road recruiting, obviously, for the University of Georgia that there's a lot of focus there. And then we got to come back to uh, Tuscaloosa and really focus on the Michigan State game during this recruiting dead period. So, it, obviously, it's a challenge. It's a time management challenge. There's only 24 hours in a day. There's only so much you can do each day. And once you accept that and know that you've got to focus on the task at hand, which the task at hand is to get ready for Michigan State, that's what we're focused on here. we got another question in the back, and then we'll move up a little bit. Hey, Coach. <clears throat> Ted Madden, Channel 8 here in Dallas. Have you talked to Coach Herman in Houston? He was in a similar situation last year. Sure, I, I actually didn't visit with Tom. I visited with other coaches who have done this and uh, took some advice from those guys, but I really haven't had a chance to visit with Tom about it, no. We're going to go up here on the aisle, then we'll pass it back. <coughs> hey, Kirby, Rick Carley, Fox 6 in Birmingham. How, how, how does this defense compare to some of the others you've had at Bama? And that might be a tough question for you because you've had some pretty good ones. Well, I would say it, it's unique in that there's a lot of good players on it, and, and they're kind of spread out throughout the defense. There's some good, good secondary players, good linebacker players, good front players. But probably the, the, the biggest difference has been one of the most fun to coach. A lot of good kids, they like practicing. I mean, these guys enjoy practicing. They get out there and, I mean, there's times that we're not trying to go uh, full speed live and they're out there wanting to tackle, go after the quarterback. The front guys are deep, so they stay fresh. We've got really good, uh, smart guys in the secondary. Outside backers, very experienced. And, and Ruben, Reggie, Sean inside get to play a lot. So it, it makes it a little bit different for me because they enjoy practice where there's been some good defenses in the past. It was like pulling teeth to get them to go out there, but they played good on Saturdays. This group enjoys it. It's, it's a joy to be around them. Another question back on the back. No? Okay, well then come on up here then. I thought we had a question on the platform. On the aisle over here about halfway up and then we'll move to the other side. Just pass it down, Caroline. Just, there you go. Kirby, you mentioned speaking to some other coach. Who did you speak to, and what, what was the best kind of advice you got on balancing the two jobs? So. Uh, you know, I spoke to several guys, but the guy that probably meant the most to me was even Dan Quinn of the Atlanta Falcons because he dealt with the playoff run there with the uh, Seahawks and going to Atlanta. And he talked about utilizing his time, cutting a couple hours out of sleep, getting up in the morning a couple hours early, working on the future job, and then allowing the same number of hours to go to uh, his current game plan. And, and tried to model myself after that. And, you know, and when you have free time, you, you sacrifice a little bit with your family. You know, it's, it's tough because the free time you have, you got to dedicate to your new job. And just managing that is the biggest thing and understanding that there's an end to this and that you got to move forward. we got a question on the aisle right, about halfway back on the right. Kirby, Craig Newman, WLNS in Lansing. Michigan State has kind of developed a stable of running backs this year. Maybe I've got us doing in the NFL and they have three or four young ones they can run at you. What's the key in stopping that? Or is Connor Cook still the straw that stirs the drink on their offense? Yeah, I would definitely say Connor Cook's the straw that stirs it. I mean, they're really good. Now, their backs, we've preached to our guys, they have big physical backs. Not a whole lot different than what we're used to at Alabama. So when you start talking about a stable of those guys, A, they're going to be fresh and they're going to play a lot of them. They kind of go with a hot hand each game, and each one has a different attribute, but they're all big. And uh, that's tough to defend now when you've got an offensive line that's experienced this there. a ton of starts. Connor Cook, 38, 39, however many starts it is, and, and such a good leader. There's no defense that we can put out there that he hasn't seen. So for us, that's the challenge, is being able to control Connor Cook and still stop the run game, which you know, they're stubborn with, they're patient with. They know what they're doing in the run game. OK, well, we'll take a question. You follow up? OK, yeah. Coach Smart, uh, Ken Caps with uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Um, you have several Texas players, state of Texas players, on your team. What, since Alabama can basically have anybody they want in the country, what is Alabama's strategy for re recruiting Texas players? Well, basically, we try to control a five-hour radius uh, of the university. But since Texas A&M came into the conference, it's allowed us a little more open doors into uh, the high schools. They're more open and receptive because they see the SEC, they get the exposure a lot better. So since the exposure's been created, we've had a lot more kids interested in us. And uh, that's the kind of thing we kind of got used to and just went over to recruit the best players we could to try to get them to come over. And we have been fortunate. We play in the SEC West. 
So a lot, a lot of the attention and the things they see are Alabama related. We're going to go back here. Well, hold on, Sam. When you get through with the question, please hand the microphone back so we can move on up to another person. Okay. Kirby, Jay Sarkar, WLNS TV in Lansing. Uh, when you look at Michigan State, their last two games against Penn State, Connor Cook really did a great job airing it out. And then against Iowa, that final drive, they run something 10, 11 straight times. So when you see that on film, just how does that kind of, uh, just dealing with a dual threat offense that if you shut down one facet, they can hit you with the other. How are you trying to game plan against that? Well, it creates balance. Balance creates difficulty. So you have a hard time. You gotta control both those aspects because if you stop one, they can be really strong in the other like you mentioned. So I mean, for us, any great team we play, you gotta try to take something away and you gotta try to mix it up so that they're not doing one thing too often. And that's kind of the game plan with these guys. You know, they do a great job. And like I said, we're not gonna put a defense out there now that Connor Cook hadn't seen. So at the end of the day, it's not tricking these guys. It's going out there fundamentally sound, being physical, striking blockers, tackling people, not making this game about something it's not. It comes down to these kids and executing, and we got to put them in a situation to execute. Question on the platform, and then we'll come up to the front. Uh, Kirby, I know you're on the defensive side of the ball, but when you have a Heisman Trophy winner, he gets a lot of attention. Just your overall thoughts on Derrick Henry as a player. Wow. I mean, just an impressive worker. This guy in our off-season conditioning program was one of the hardest workers we had. He's always at high speed. Some of his GPS numbers are the highest on the team. He likes the weight room, tough, physical, enjoys the game. He's always been that way since coming out of down in Uly, Florida. So I, I respect what Derek's done, his toughness. I think our team kind of takes on his persona and uh, physical nature. So I, I think he's a great player, obviously. We got a question on the front here and then we'll move <clears throat> to the back. Eddie, Rachel Speaker, UTA Communications. Uh, do you remember playing against Madre London when he played for St. Thomas in high school? And if so, does that bring anything back, like, or anything else to this game for you? Uh, yeah, I remember playing against him. In high school, he was, he was great back, just like he is now, doing the same things, you know. He was the guy that was hard to tackle. He run with, you know, a sense of urgency. He's physical, so we really just have to work on wrapping him up and bringing him to the ground. Got a question all in the rear. This, this is for Eddie and Denzel. If there's an Achilles heel in some people's eyes uh, uh, pertaining to your defense, it could be the defensive backfield. After last year's Ohio State game, you feel like you've got a chip on your shoulder? You really want to prove to the world that you're the, the real deal against the Spartans? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, we, we, we go and practice day in and day out trying to be, you know, the strongest thing on the defense. Like, we get motivated by our front seven, you know, our D-line, they do a great job, outside backers, inside backers, so that really motivates the secondary to come in every day and step it up, you know, to tackle more, to attack the ball, be more physical. So it really, it really gives a, a big chip on our shoulder. Well, going into this year, uh, we preached a lot on finishing, and uh, every day, every practice, we just go in and, and work hard and work on finishing each and every practice. That way we'll be able to finish each and every game. So. Uh, for the past two years, we never finished, and uh, we just preach a lot this year on finishing the season right. So, I mean, that's our main goal. Question on the front. Coach Smart, two questions for you. First of all, in 2011, when you faced the Spartans in the Camp One Bowl, that was a team still building. They're more established today, considerably deeper. Would you talk about the differences? And then secondly, this is the healthiest they have been all year. How difficult is it to game plan when – you're going to see them at a health place you, they, you don't have on film this year. First question is probably the most difficult one I've had because in 2011, there's a lot of water under the bridge since then. I mean, it's been tough, it's tough for me to say the difference in that team and this team. Um, but the second question, at full strength, they're obviously really, really, really talented. They've had some guys out throughout the year, backs dinged up, different things. So obviously, we, we wouldn't want to play them at any less than their best. And it's the same way for us. We've had some guys dinged up, some guys injured that we're trying to get back. So that, that's the best way to play somebody is when they're at their strength. And we're looking forward to that. Question on the left, and then we'll come back to the right. <clears throat> This is for both the players, uh, Denzel and Eddie, uh, a two-part question. Later, you're going to visit the Children's Hospital today. Um, who enjoys that more, you or the children that you're visiting? And secondly, given that you're big-time college football players, is there a responsibility that you feel to give back off the field as well as you do on the field? 
Um, yeah, you always want to give back to uh, to everyone, your communities or anything. So uh, whenever we have chances to go to the hospitals and visit little kids and stuff, we know it makes their day, it makes our day, because we see the opportunities that God given us to go out and play football. And we know that, you know, through circumstances, they wish they could play too as well. So uh, it makes both of our days, and uh, it's just, it's a happy moment. Yeah, I would say the same thing, you know, because you never know how, how much you can affect someone's life just by going in there and just saying a few words to them and spending a, just a little time. So, I mean, it really affects us. Like Denzel said, you know, we have a God-given talent to come out here every day, compete and play this great sport of football. So, and to give back, I mean, you always should give back. You know, I was, I was raised on that, you know. That's one of the big things we preach on this team when we see a fan or something walking around. They ask us to take a picture. We'll take a picture, you know, talk to them. So things like that, it really, it just really helps. We got a question on the right side, about three quarters of the way back. This question is for Kirby and Eddie Carl Perth, WFF TV in Huntsville. You all made a point to try and find a way to create some sort of turnovers throughout the season, coming into the to the season this year. How happy have you been with just the way that the defensive backfield has been able to create those turnovers? Uh, once again, question for Kirby and Eddie. It's been great for us. Obviously, you never get enough. I mean, as a defense coordinator, we're constantly wanting more turnovers, trying to create, trying to find ways to motivate guys to do it. But ultimately, the kids got to coach themselves on that. They got to buy into it. They got to challenge themselves each day to, hey, Eddie's going to get more than Geno. Marlon's going to get more than Cyrus. And uh, that's kind of what each unit is taking pride in, trying to create those turnovers and buy into that. We've done a better job of that this year. I think the awareness of it. I think uh, you know, Coach Tucker, Coach Luboy, both did a great job preaching it to our total defense. And we've gotten, you know, I like to think more effort to the ball. And when you get more effort to the ball, you get more turnovers. And uh, when you got really good athletes in the secondary, you get more interceptions. So we've been fortunate to, to get that uh, this year. And a lot of it comes from rushing four guys and, and affecting the quarterback with guys like Denzel up front. That allows us to get turnovers. So we've been fortunate to do that. Yeah, I mean, turnovers are, it's, it's real important for us. We go in every day, you know, Coach Smart and like you said, Coach Tucker, they preach every day, get the ball out, rip the ball out, break on the ball, you know, go get the ball at its highest point, you know. So in the game, when our front seven give a great push and the ball is in the air, secondary, we just try to go up and get it. And, you know, one man on the tackle, second man to the tackle, try to rip the ball out. So that really, we really, we really go over that and emphasize that in practice a lot. We got a question on the right-hand side in the front. Uh, this is uh, for Coach Smart and uh, for uh, Eddie. Uh, this is Mark Tracy from the New York Times. Uh, it seems like, uh, especially in the defense, uh, there's always uh, a guy ahead on the depth chart who's older and another guy coming behind such that, you know, lots of players really only uh, are full-time starters for a year or two because there's just such a glut of, uh, of talented players. Um, from the coaching recruiting standpoint, I was wondering how you kind of manage that and how you kind of recruit to that, tell these really highly recruited players, we want you, but you're not necessarily going to be a four-year starter. And then uh, in, in Eddie, your case, you know, you even switch positions uh, to kind of make the whole thing work uh, partially. And uh, I was wondering how that process went for you. I mean, uh, for me, you know, when you come in, you're going to have guys like I had Ha Ha Clint Dix, uh, CJ Mosley, Denzel, Reggie, you know, guys, great talent. You know, they didn't come in and just play their first year beside CJ. So it's a humbling experience. You know, you come in, being all five star, four star, got the big head, then you come in and you, you just sitting on the bench and waiting your chance. So it really humbles you. You know, in the position change, it was it was difficult at first, you know, but like I said, I put my trust in Coach Saban and Coach Smart and my teammates, you know, they lift me up and like, you can do it, you know. So I really came out there every day, competed, tried my best and it worked out for the best. Uh, well, first off, did you start some games as a freshman? Nah. Did you did you did you play much as a freshman? Not really. Kind How of. about you? Did, did you play some as a freshman? I played a little bit. Yeah. So I mean, I, to me, it's it's about having a role. And a lot a lot of our kids, Minka, Ronnie, we've had some really successful freshmen come in and play, and then we've had some other guys that had to wait their turn. I think that's an individual basis. It's hard to say. It's one way or the other. Definite. And I think that's the case across the country. Um, but a lot of guys have roles. Might be a great pass rusher, might be a good guy on third down to come in and cover somebody. Might be a big old goal line guy that can play the run. And finding roles for those guys is important because when they get involved, they get to play a little more and do some more things. We got a question on the left side. 
Just for the two players, uh, that defensive line is pretty deep, it's pretty stout. Um, do they get on each other? Do they challenge each other? Do they, uh, uh, what's it like at practice? Give me some insight. Do they push, do they shove each other? Do they get on each other, yell at each other? Uh, well, I play on the D-line with those guys and man, they, they set the tone every day for practice. Uh, however they come out, that's how the whole team gonna come out. So uh, to play, play on the uh, line with those guys, man, it's exciting because there's never a dull moment. If uh, one guy's down, they're going to pick him up. If one guy's not doing right, they're going to get on him. So, uh, I mean, I look at it as far as a, a leadership stance. Um, they go out every day and, and set the tone for the whole team. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I call them savages, you know, like a bunch of caged animals. I mean, <laughs> you go out there every day, you just see them. They jump around, they hype, they pump. They let's go, y'all, let's go. So they really, they really lift us up in the secondary, like I said. You know, just, just watching those guys go out there and do what they do, it's just, it really affects you, you know, to come out with trade game and play your best. You know, it's just it's like we got something called cold red. I mean, hit everything, you know. So it's, it, it'd be fun. This could be the final question while we're in here. <clears throat> On the right-hand side, go ahead. Jeff Schultz of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Kirby, what did you learn about coaching from your father? Um, and, and would you just stop calling him with questions about defenses? And then the follow-up to that is, um, when you were recruiting, did you have this kind of strange sense of divided loyalties? I mean, you were coaching Alabama, but you were recruiting for Georgia, and did, how did recruits interact with you about that? Yeah, uh, I'll answer the one about my dad first. First of all, I've never stopped calling him, asking him questions, because he's a wealth of knowledge, and I've got a lot of respect for high school coaches, period. Obviously, they don't do it for the money. They do it for the love of the game. And there's a lot of those coaches that I've met that are just as good or better coaches than me, and they just weren't given a lot of the same opportunities. So for, for my dad, he's got a wealth of knowledge, um, a lot of wisdom, and I like bouncing a lot of ideas and decisions off of him. And then when it goes to the recruiting factor, you know, you, you got to be in two modes. you got to be able to transition from here to here. So obviously, when I'm recruiting for the University of Georgia, it's a one-track mind. I'm recruiting for the University of Georgia. It's the primary and the only goal at that time. And no, I don't have mixed loyalties when I'm recruiting for the University of Georgia because I'm working towards an end goal of building a successful program. But when I'm coaching these guys and I'm in the meeting room with them, I think everyone will tell you that I'm 100% there and we're concentrated on trying to get better and beat Michigan State. But separating those two things has not been difficult because you've got to be able to do that in your job. You've got to be able to focus on academics one minute, athletics another minute, and you've got to be able to transition from day to day.